Golf has two systems, the speed generation system and the impact alignment system. Well, what's a speed generation system? If we have a hammer and we go like this, we can only hit the nail so hard, right? But if we bend our arm and do that, that's the dip, that's a, both are speed generation systems, one different than the other. So the question is, same thing with this, if our arms always stayed straight and in front of our body, we can only move this club so fast. That's a speed generation system. There's nothing saying we can't hit a 20 yard pitch and do it that way, because we don't need a better speed generation system to make the ball go further. So the speed generation system is part of the golf systems, and the other is the impact alignment system. I'm not gonna get into that deep, but because I think this group already knows that very well. What's the impact alignment system? There's only four laws in golf. Everything else is optional. The speed generation system, is part of it. That's the efficient acceleration and deceleration of the body segments from proximal to distal end. So again, if we're sitting here doing this, that's a speed, and then the one we go out of line, in line, you know, that way, that's much more speed. And that actually happens in the ankles, in the knee, in the hip, and the, you know, all the way through the body from proximal to distal end. What I really did a lot in my earlier days is the geometric impact alignment system. The path, the face, and the impact point. So those are the only four things that tell a golf ball what to do, putt to drive. The geometric impact alignment system is path, and most people think path is just to the right of the target, at the target, or left, but you've got the vertical path. So if you've got a little red dot in the middle of the club head, and you're tracking it, that's its path. We're just measuring that little red dot moving in relation to the horizon and the target. It's only one direction of force. So why do you think I describe it that way? Because that's half of the D-plane. So the D-plane is the direction of force and the direction of face, which is our last one, our second to last one. You've got the horizontal face, which is loft, and then the, I mean, uh, uh, vertical face, which is loft, and the horizontal, which is right, left, but it's still only face. And then last is impact point, which introduces gear effect. I could go on and on just on this slide, but everybody pretty much knows all this. So that's the four laws. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how the ground reaction forces affect the speed generation system along with the 3D, and then how the ground reaction forces affect the geometric impact alignments. It's one thing to make the club go fast, but it better be lawful at impact, right? So it's very important that we're, we're careful with that. And adjusting one system without consideration of the other is inefficient. If we, the minute you try to be careful in golf, it's usually not gonna come to be a good outcome. So with the speed generation system, we measure the body movements with gears with 32 sensors on the body and six on the club. And then with the smart to move 3D dual force plates. So that's how we start doing it. Uh, we measure people. When I give a golf lesson, they're gonna hit about a half a dozen seven irons and about a half a dozen drivers with me measuring, measuring them on gears, force plates, and track man. I don't say anything to them even if they're long-term students. I wanna see what they're doing walking in the building. That gives me my base. So, ground reaction force is a tale of lateral and vertical forces peaking, then reversing on the downswing, and rotational forces that peak and slow down on the downswing. That's very important we understand that. So, lateral, peaking and reversing, vertical, down and up. Very important to understand that they are moving in one direction and then change directions. What causes the ground reaction forces? Gravity, I'm standing here, I'm staying in one place, so gravity's pushing against me as much as I'm pushing against the ground. If they drop me out of a plane, there's, there is some air resistant force, so if we dropped out of a plane in a vacuum, we would go faster, wouldn't we? Because now we have air resistant forces or sand resistance forces, or soft ground resistant forces. Those are not equal, are they? So if you wanna hit a ball the furthest, you need to be on the firmest footing you can have. 
How many good shots have you ever hit when you slip? Not many. And they go, well, well, Scotty slips. Well, Scotty's already lead so hard, he can dance all he wants with that trail foot. He's lead hard. I called it the Greg Norman foot before I ever knew Scotty Scheffler, you know. And if it slips all the time the same way, it's okay. I believe if you put steel spikes on Scotty Scheffler tomorrow, he'd play worse. You go, well, why? Because now when his foot goes back, it's going to grab. And that's just as foreign to him as slipping is to us. Friction, traction, because think about it. Why is Scotty's foot slipping? Because he has no friction at that moment because he's already lead and he's still applying that AP force at that time and his foot moves back. So if he had friction, he wouldn't slip. But he doesn't have any, any pressure on that. The raising and lowering of the body segments, the elevator. So we're on the elevator this morning and we're going up. Did I create that force? The elevator did it. Went up and boom, ground reaction force. Or went down, ground reaction force. So the elevator created the ground reaction force. But in our human bodies, we create the ground reaction force. We have to do something first that causes the ground reaction force. So it's not like some magical force out of the ground. The anterior posture, posterior foot force, lead and trail, is what causes rotation, like Greg beautifully said about when they're coming from both directions, opposite directions, on both sides of the cap, you turn the cap better. Well, I, I, I explain it like when y'all have, you know, when you get a flat and you've got that X tire tool and you put it on the nut and you pull down on one side and push on the other, that was way more efficient than the one where you just put over here and pushed on the one side. So they made the one-sided one what? Longer because you couldn't twist it as good as with the double. Plus it would fall off because of the torquing. Leg flexion and extension. Leg flexion and extension is a lot to do with what happens in the ground. Flexion is bending, extension. When it happens, how fast it happens, the timing of it, how fast it changes is huge in creating ground reaction forces. The pull of the club towards the ball and the arms. So if I swing my arms, so if I'm on, my, if I'm on the force plates and I swing my arms, when they get through here, even if I'm not moving my body, my ground force gets higher because the club, the arms are pulling me towards the ground. No different, one of the reasons we de-weight early in the backswing is because our arms are thrusted up, okay? And so when our arms are thrust, you know, arms are thrusted up, it will push us into the ground just a little bit early because our arms are picking up. And so it's just those little subtle movements in realizing that once that club has speed in it, it also has force in it. You know how much a club's pulling on you at impact? People with high club head speeds, you know, 120 or 15, 20, it's like 80 pounds, 90 pounds. This is a, I don't know kilos, but let's say that's a 50 pound kettlebell. If I weld this club to that kettlebell and just pick it up off the ground, don't swing it. You think you could grip it like a bird? That's crazy. Now, to dress, it might be a little more relaxed, but come into the ball, you don't see anybody's arms relaxed at impact. You're seeing these ripples and they're holding on for dear life. So the one, it, we get to the point in golf where we're swinging the club, but it's also swinging us. These forces and movements have an effect on the speed generation system and the impact alignment system. The golf swing is a controlled jackknife with geometric consequences. Everybody knows what a jackknife is, right? It's in a holster. Let's say this is the holster and here's the blade. And when you swing it and you stop this and this goes flying out, that's golf. But it has geometric consequences. Uh, because, yes, if we stop this and this flies out, that's great for speed generation, but how does that make the club be delivered to the ball for that given golfer? Some people, they throw it so early. We know. I tell people I have a house because of throw away, throw away, and slicing. Right? We all have houses because of throw away and slicing. It's a controlled jackknife. 
So if I'm here at, I call them, y'all, everybody knows the P system. It's the best I have. So if we're here and I'm just sitting here and somebody grabbed me by the shirt label and yanked me to the ceiling fast, what's going to happen to this angle? It's going to dump. If I'm moving forward and stop, what's going to happen to this angle? It dumps. Those are the things I knew long before I had all this, but now I can measure what's going on. You need to do training to increase your speed. Like Greg says, you need to get stronger in certain ways. This is Jason here, Zubak. This has been in my, my slide presentation for over 10 years, and I'd only met Jason a couple years ago. And uh, by the way, he told me today in the 90s he was 155 miles an hour clubhead speed. Think about it, even the long drive guys were 145, 147 six years ago, and that was the tops. I mean, talk about a freak of nature. That's unbelievable. So to train to get speed, because look, if you can't move fast, and we're gonna get into segmental movement in a minute, if we don't get to it today, we'll get to it tomorrow, how fast people move. I wanna hit it further. Well, if you, you can't hit it further unless you move faster. Golf is a complicated game. I love this slide because it's, it's what's in my head when I look at a golf swing. And that's all the components. Here's the lateral. She's pushing backwards and the backwards pushing forward. And here's the center of mass. And obviously if they're equal, nobody's winning. But then sometimes one of them win, right? On the laterals. Then we have the verticals, which is this scissor jack. Everybody knows what a scissor jack is? And it picks the car up. Well, you got a scissor jack on the wheels, and there's the two legs creating vertical forces. And then you've got the center of mass of the car, and you got this pendulum that's not a single pendulum. It's a quadruple pendulum, if you ask me, because you've got the shoulders turning around the upper, upper neck, you've got the left arm swinging around the left shoulder, and heaven forbid if you've got a left arm bending and straightening all over the place as another lever, and then you've got the club swinging around the hands. And to make it even more complicated, the club, I mean the car and the jack is on a lazy Susan. You see that little circle right there? Everybody knows what a lazy Susan is. You put all the food on it, you can spin it around. So the ball is sitting here on the ground that's not moving. This don't move, this don't move, and everything else is moving. Holy crap, how do we hit the ball? Because we've got to time all that to hit the ball first and then the ground. You know when the ball's on a tee, it's a different set of rules. We can get away with a lot of stuff when the ball's on a tee. Those of us who've been teaching a long, long time, I'm going back 30, 40 years ago, with the wooden clubs, everybody came to you and they said their worst club in the bag was their, tell me, driver. driver. Now, almost nobody it's their least favorite club. Because it's this freaking big, it don't twist anymore, and the ball don't curve. Besides that, it's hitting it off the ground. Ball turf. Well, hell, if you change any one of these forces, you start changing when that club goes into the ground first. And then you gotta create speed because you have to move this center and this one away from the golf ball as you're hitting it. This and this are moving away big time. 